In my last video, I did a walkthrough of the wireless setup I was using to receive free, you know, quote unquote, free internet here at my mom's house. So in that previous video, I mentioned that I might order some more gear in order to stabilize the setup a little because the current configuration is sort of prone to dropping the signal and can be, you know, a pain in the butt. So here you can see a TP-Link WA801ND access point repeater. Uh, it also has client mode, which generally uh, is better for squeezing as much bandwidth out of a signal as possible. Uh, even though I have a massive 24 dBi parabolic grid dish antenna, <laughs> I thought that this little thing might come in handy in case I end up putting the TP-Link device in repeater mode. I can efficiently rebroadcast the signal throughout the house through this 8 dBi uh, omnidirectional antenna. So now here... We have something that I have actually never fiddled with, but long desired to. Uh, this is a Sunnins SH2500. If you mess around with this type of thing for long enough, eventually you'll end up buying one of these. And uh, so here I am at that particular juncture in my life. Uh, this one works on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency only, uh, BGN. And uh, I must say right off the bat, for such a small box, uh, whatever's in here feels very substantial, uh, just going by weight alone. Uh, now as for the specs, I'll try to focus in a little bit here with the camera so that viewers at home can read what the uh, company claims that this device does. Uh, then we'll unbox it, and in a little while we'll test it out a bit. Okay, uh, let's open this sucker up, and uh, let's see everything that co that it comes with. Here's the user manual. Um, hmm, now this I didn't know, it only supports up to 150 megabits per second. Uh, I did not know that. So, uh, as you can clearly see here, uh, there is some discrepancy between the product components on the cover of the box and, uh, uh also on the cover of the manual and the actual hardware it came with. The photo shows a black antenna, but the one that this came with, anyway, is white. I mean, I'm not going to complain about it, but it's just a little small discrepancy. I figured I'd make note of it. Uh, it is, it's pretty weighty though, I mean, it's not the antenna that I anticipated, like I said, it looks a little different from the box, but it, it feels like a quality product, so I'm not going to complain. Yeah, so, uh, not a lot going on in this manual, uh, it's a pretty straightforward device. The instructions are self-explanatory. I mean, there's really not much to it. There's no drivers to install or anything. Just plug and play. Here's the SMA pigtail it comes with, uh, female and male. If you can see in there, it sort of doesn't always want to focus the way I'd like. But uh, yeah, the other end of this prong is RP SMA, and then you know, then you've got uh, the female end. So I distinctly recall a few Amazon reviewers panning the included SMA cable as being poorly, quote unquote, poorly constructed. You know, air quotes. But uh, I don't know, you know, it feels like a quality pigtail to me. I mean, not as heavy as my TrendNet cable, but um, it's which is insulated. But, you know, it's only four or five inches long. I'm not entirely sure here what the... Uh, but, uh, yeah, not much danger of bleeding out any signal through the coax. That's what 
I know people might be worried about because it seems kind of... I mean, it's somewhat flimsy, but I've definitely seen flimsier, that's for sure. Yeah, so here's the power pack. 12 volts. Uh, strikes me as kind of large for a 2-watt device, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. And uh, now the adapter itself here. I'll say this for primary impressions, uh, this thing seems very well made, and it's rather heavy for its small size. You know, at least that much instills me with a little confidence, you know, because it certainly feels rugged. I mean, for sure, this this thing is, is built. The build is sturdy. It's very sturdy build. Uh, so yeah, here we have two antenna, two radio. So again, the instructions are pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I know there's only, like, a very small chip in here, but, um, I, I don't see anything on the box that says that it's meant for outdoor use, per se, but it, it feels like you could even mount it outdoors. Uh, some nifty mounting holes built on so that you can, uh, pin it to a wall if, if need be. I mean, there's not much, I mean, in here in terms of guts, as far as, you know, I'm aware, but uh, yeah, it sure feels hefty. I'm, I'm definitely impressed with the build of this for sure. I feel like I need to reiterate that it's, and uh, yeah. So anyway, that's everything it comes with. So uh, what do you say we fire this thing up? Just remember when it uh, connecting everything together that the end of the device, which says two radio, takes the pigtail end with the pin in it. So that will be your RP SMA connector end. Whereas the uh, two antenna side has a pin in it. And that'll take your uh, just your female SMA connector. And uh, that'll be what'll attach to your router. Or, or in this case, we're gonna, I'm going to use my adapter. And uh, yeah, try not to confuse the two so you don't break your booster before you even have a chance to use it. Okay, so uh, last time I showed off my setup, uh, I introduced you to the 2.4 gigahertz, 24 dBi TP-Link brand. That's uh, it's a TP-Link brand um, makes this, uh, which is a Chinese company. Uh, it's a parabolic grid dish Wi-Fi antenna, 2.4 gigahertz. It's all all of this stuff's 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, also, what we have here is the Alpha AWUS 036 NHA adapter. So, uh, again, I showed this in my previous video, and if you want to, you know, uh, see a little bit more of that, you can, uh, I'll put that video at the end, or I'll link it in the description. Um, so, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you Insider, or in SSID, or, or, uh, or however you want to pronounce that. And, um, we're going to take a look at some of the local networks and related analytics info. Then we're going to attach the new booster. And, uh, and look at the numbers again to see how the quality and strength are affected. So as you can see, what we're connected to right now is Wegmans. Uh, right now the RSSI is negative uh, 60 decibels, which uh, is, is actually pretty good, you know, considering what it usually is, because it's usually somewhere between 65 and 75 for me. Anytime that I'm, I'm cogni co like cognizant of, of the numbers, and I do check them often. You know, I, I keep tabs on this for a while, so actually, it just fell under 60, which uh, I don't think I've ever consciously observed before now. But uh, the speed has been iffy lately, and it's been dropping the signal quite often as well. Although it always reconnects quickly, so that's, you know, good. Uh, occasionally, I need to manually connect it, though. Uh, the past couple of days, this has been on channels 10 and 6. Uh, usually, it's on channel 7. And... Uh, it's, it's possible that that's why the connection has been sort of iffy recently. Uh, I don't really know if there's any more reason for experiencing interruptions rather than that. But uh, yeah, the channels get kind of congested around here, so that's also something. Anyway, let's go ahead and test this thing and see what we get. So just remember now, this is pre-booster.
like I said, you know, the speed has been kind of shit for a few days, and especially at this time of day, it tends to drop off a bit. But uh, this is actually the worst I've seen it, and, uh, you know, of course I'm filming this video right now, so that's, you know, one of the reasons why it would do that. Uh, as you can see, the ping ain't bad. It definitely, I mean, that's a good ping right there. Uh, considering the distance between myself and the access point, but the speed for some reason right now is just not so great. Uh, the upload speed is, uh, well, it's not so great either. Uh, okay, so per the instructions on the booster, I'm going to unplug the adapter and we'll remove it from the antenna. Again, be sure to connect the pigtail to the appropriate end. Now, uh, the instructions say to power the device before you turn your router back on, or in this case, the uh, we're going to use the alpha adapter. So uh, I've replugged the adapter, and uh, it's feeding uh, the signal through this device, where uh, it's taking that original signal from the adapter, and it's rebroadcasting it with an added uh, 2.5 watts of power. So this here is the signal light, as you can see, that is... Uh, signifying that it's uh, receiving and operating correctly. All right, so we're going to go back into uh, Insider again. And the first thing you'll notice, this is kind of interesting. It says the RSSI number is now higher than it was before for some reason. I mean, before it, it actually hit 59, but now it's back above 60. Uh, but I will say this, the color of the signal is usually represented in green. I don't know if that means anything, but uh, now, as you can see, it's blue. I've never seen that before, so that's why I'm sort of remarking on that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, even more notably, um, the list of SSIDs is about a third long, just based on sort of observation, I'll have to count these, it, but it's, it seems to be about a third longer than I've ever seen it before now, so that's also promising. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem to have changed the RSSI much, but... Uh, yeah, boy, oh boy, there's many, many more available signals. So that's that's kind of uh, promising. Uh, I don't recognize many of these at all. I'm actually surprised that I'm still scrolling here, though. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot more signals. So uh, maybe I'm underestimating just how many more there are. I don't know. I'll have to go through and count later to compare booster versus no booster. But uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely seems to be doing something, so that's good. And uh, on that note, you know, uh, let's look at what may be my most important metric, in my opinion, anyway. I mean, you want the link quality to be good, too. You want it to be stable, but, I mean, my most important metric is uh, speed. So let's take a look at that. I hope going through the booster doesn't affect the ping too much here, because... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not bad. I like what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, that's pretty... I mean, it, I mean, you can see how it jumped there, but then it starts to level off. But, uh, yeah, I, I anticipate a little bit. I expect that. That's to be expected with this type of setup. Yeah, as long as I can sort of establish a baseline that's at least above 3 megabits per second, that's good for me. So, yeah, cool. There you have it, folks. That's, uh, yeah, not bad. I don't know. I mean, there's some conflicting, you know, stuff going on here as far as the SSI versus the speed. I'm not, I'll have to uh, research that a little bit, but, um, yeah, but this is the best speed I've seen, you know, at this time of day. Usually it drops down to like two megabits per second during peak hours, more or less, anywhere between like one and four. But, uh, yeah, the past few days it's, it's actually been kind of abysmal, as you saw earlier with the 0 0.20 or 0 0.30 something numbers, you know, it was not so good, but, uh, yeah, with the booster, it's faster than it usually is around this time. So that's, yeah, like I said, that's when bandwidth is being stretched as thin as possible. And the whole neighborhood's just, you know, chock full of channel interference. So, yeah, I'll take this as a preliminary uh, success for sure. I mean, in terms of numbers, um, you know, it didn't really seem like there was that much difference for some odd reason. But, uh, I mean, it's definitely boosting something, as you can tell. So... The speed is way better, you know, and the amount of signals seems better. 
uh, in terms of increased amount of available signals. So it's not exactly knocking me out uh, as like with performance across the board. But uh, yeah, I'm happy enough with what I'm seeing so far. So Because many reviewers online said that these Wi-Fi boosters can become quite hot after prolonged use, you know, considering that I fully intended to uh, run this device straight for long periods of time. And, uh, yeah, so now it's been on for uh, a little over 20 hours now. And, uh, yeah, it's still more or less cool to the touch. There's some slight warmth in the middle of it in the back, but yeah, not anything that I would feel concerned over. So, you know, even after more or less than, you know, about a full day's worth for 24-hour day, it's being plugged in and and boosting the whole time. Uh, the casing is still cool to the touch, except in one localized spot here in the back where it feels slightly warmish. Not that I would really, you know, be it's not going to burn the house down, that's for sure. It's, especially not in this heavy-duty, like, cast aluminum casing. And, uh, yeah, as for how well it's doing, well, what it was designed to do, uh, it's still improving the speed over what it's been, but uh, do I think it's uh, doing anything miraculous? No, not really. I would say not. Uh, is it better to have this than not have it? Um, I would say yes, ultimately. I don't regret buying this so far, because uh, considering the situation, uh, I'll take any boost and improvement. And, you know, uh, at, at a price tag of $37, I didn't exactly break, uh, break the bank with this. So all in all, um, we'll see how things work out as time goes by, but yeah, I'm going to, I guess I'll give it a thumbs up.